If you are in the Makita XGT line and you want a very quiet battery operated air compressor, here's something you might want to look at. 68 decibels, it's not bad. It's got a little bit of a lower pitched hum to it. Two gallon, 1.2 SCFM at 90 PSI. Somebody's gonna ask me, how's it do filling up tires? It doesn't because this guy has a duty cycle of 50%. So Makita runs that as if this air compressor is actually on for 50% of one hour or 30 minutes out of 60, that is going to be its max. Any more than that, they consider that misuse. And if you were to use this pumping up a tire, it's going to be constantly running and that is not what this is meant for. It's meant for guys who still like pneumatic nailers. They're going to go through and use this probably as it could be a punchless thing. It could be as the whole house. It's going to actually have a great runtime. It's going to have a 135 PSI max. It's going to come down to 105 and then pump itself back up, keeping that 90 PSI rating for your tools. So we're going to go through this guy top to bottom. The one thing I didn't mention that everybody's going to want me to talk about cost. So not only do you have to be in the XGT line, you have to, you know, want a quiet compressor. You're also going to want to shell out $400 for this bad boy. Yes, $400 and $400 buys you this tool without a battery or charger. It's very basic and similar to any other air compressor you're going to see. You have rubber feet on the bottom. You also have your tank drain down here that is open. Safety valve here. You have one quick connect on this side your on and off switch here, along with your tank pressure, outlet pressure, and then your regulator. The one thing with the regulator that I kind of feel is weird, when you push this down, it doesn't snap. Listen, you can kind of hear it go, but not much, you don't feel anything. But when you pull up, there is a snap. So you think when you lock it into place when it goes down, it really doesn't lock. And it feels like and looks like it should, it just doesn't. So that's weird to me. Very smooth here. I need to check this out. Have not run this unit yet. I want to do everything with you guys. Here's where the battery goes in in the back. Very simple, nice place. Motor is behind this. This is basically going to be your inlet. This is what's going to quiet this down. So this piece here is going to have your air filter on the inside. And you can see most of the quiet compressors have this. It's just another part of quieting everything down. It's a piece of trying to get this down to 68 decibels, which is quite a feat, but there are also quite a few other models out there that are like this. Everything is encased in plastic, which is probably gonna hold heat in, which is why you want to be sure that you're not using this more than its duty cycle. So let's turn this guy on. Basically here we are at zero because the tank was open. We're going to close that, hit our stopwatch here, and we're gonna see how long it takes to go from zero all the way up to full. Now this switch is a little slow, so I'm not gonna start my watch until the air compressor actually starts. one minute 35 seconds ish in order to get up to the 135 psi that to me is not horrible that's pretty standard from what i've seen from smaller air compressors so we're just going to drop this guy slowly down to 105. Its recovery time is going to be approximately 22 to 23 seconds, which isn't bad at all. And when we look at this and think, okay, it's a two gallon, which seems larger. In some ways it is and isn't. I have a 50 foot hose here. I'm just going to plug this in. We can see we're, we're at 135. That takes us almost to the point where it has to turn on again, which is very interesting. I mean, we have very little for it to hit its recovery point. So 
So when you think of that as compared to a tire, you know, we have a, a 50 foot hose that wasn't much and it drops it from 135 to 105. There's a lot of air that's going to fit inside a tire. It just simply doesn't work that way. We're going to watch the decibel meter here and just see what's going on. Again, we have a small leak in this, which is on my end because it's at this swivel. But here's what this is completely quiet. 27. Here we go. So you can see me slowly getting closer to the camera there and it came down into the 60s the further I got away. We are 18 inches away from this unit with the camera. So it's going to meet about its 68 decibels once you get to about three feet away from this. So we just hit our full recovery. We have a small Makita 18 gauge pneumatic nailer. Let's just see how many nails it takes before we have to recover again. Fifteen, and that's not too bad. <clears throat> and you can see, well, you can't see because you're further away. The nails were kind of starting to get a little bit higher, which they shouldn't. I have this set up for 90 psi. Let's just wait for this to recover again. I'm going to regulate this up just a hair above. We do have a longer hose. I do have to say this is quite quiet and easy to be around. Same thing about 14. So it's not bad. There is some serious vibration going on on this battery, which is something that we always talk about when we look at impact. And Makita usually has that down. So I'm gonna bring you in and see if the camera will pick that up. We're just gonna tip the scale here on the PSI below 105 so this kicks on. I want you to take a look at how much it moves back and forth. And it might be harder to pick up with the camera, but this battery is going to be moving around quite a bit. And the rubber feet allow for all this to move, which is good and probably keeps it quiet, keeps every, all the vibrations mostly down, but it does take it out on this battery. Let's take a watch. Quite a bit of vibration. You can see it's actually vibrating itself. Even though we have sticky rubber feet, it's moving itself around. And if we just watch this battery, it's pretty serious. I don't know what that is going to do long term for taking its toll on the battery. We're always, you know, talk to about impact wrenches and how much vibration they put on the battery and how hard it is on the battery in ways that they try to isolate that impacting or that vibration from the battery. Here there is none and that battery is vibrating quite a bit. Not horrible. I guess per se, but Makita must obviously think that's okay. Something that I don't have here is a lock on this regulator, which surprises me because I can pick it up and I can push it down, but it doesn't lock in any of those places. That could be an error in manufacturing because we do have little cuts down here, which it seems like it would slide over and lock, but it definitely does not. Very, very smooth though. You can see the needle going down. And then if we want to bring it back up, very smooth, something that, you know, I, I kind of expect from Makita's stuff and something I would expect from a $400 air compressor. Would also like to see this be able to lock in place at 90. 
and not have someone move it because it does move quite easily. So Makita makes a similar air compressor. I'm by no means saying it's the same and I don't know if it's that quiet. That plugs into the wall for $226. So in my mind, if you're gonna upgrade to the 40 volt XGT model, you're paying almost double for that and you have the ability to use smaller, probably a little bit more accurate per se as far as sinking nails, a little bit more refined pneumatic air nailers. Some people will argue against it and they'll want to use the larger battery operated air nailer and it's kind of a mix. How much money do you put into air nailers because air nailers are cheap, battery operated nailers are expensive, battery operated air compressors are expensive. The money's going out no matter how you play this game unless you run what we'll call old school which would be corded and in my mind all I would need if I was running this is going to be a corded quiet air compressor along with a great small pneumatic gun that I had a lot of faith in that sunk nails consistently rock and roll it out let it go I think that's where most people land because trim carpenters should have power and if you don't then that's just kind of odd now if you want to go room to room and you don't want to continually have that extension quarter power then you're going to pay the price a little bit and get this i get that also it's a tough call as to what you do i'm really curious as to what you guys think in the comments a lot of people are going to want to use this for multiple different things and i think the size of this tank kind of lead you to say, maybe I could use it for filling up different things around the pool. Maybe I could do this. Realistically, there's not a lot of air in here. So if you're gonna think about using this for airbrushing, anything like that, it's quite small. Get something a little bit larger. I think you're gonna want five gallon. I get it. I know everybody wants to get something super quiet, super easy to carry around, but man, I'll tell you, there's not a lot of air. And with the duty cycle, which every air compressor has a duty cycle, follow it because you'll burn these things up quite quickly. There's no oil in here. There's no anything. It's just going to get too hot. Boom. It's gone. Follow that duty cycle. Anyway, comments below. Would you use this? Would you pay the money? What would you rather have? Battery, corded, all kinds of stuff. Love to hear that. As always, we appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a great day.